Hey everyone, it's your buddy Graphic back with another video and today we're going to talk a little bit about how fast and what is the quickest way really to level up in New World. A lot of you guys want to get to level 60, whether it's to just explore some of those awesome zones like Reekwater or Evans Skill Reach or even some of these white zones like Shattered Mountain or do some of those legendary side quests. There's a lot of reasons whether it's, you know, outpost rush, invasions, or just participate in wars as a level 60. Um, there's, like I said, tons of reasons as to why you'd want to hit max level in New World. So if you're trying to do it the fastest way, you are in the right place. I'm going to kind of walk you guys through some of the most obvious things to do and then some of the things that you may not know about. And uh, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about my strategy and my guide to get to level 60 as quickly as possible. So let's jump into it. So obviously the very, very first thing you're going to want to know, guys, is leveling up in New World is going to obviously take time. So one thing to keep in mind is when you're taking your time, make sure to make it the most efficient as possible. One thing to do while you know doing your main story, your main quest, because that's going to be the one that grants you the most XP, is to pick up these side quests. You're going to see here we have a ton of side quests inside of Weaver's Fen, right? So there's tons of them. And you can see all these yellow different spots to pick up. And you know, you're going to want to pick those up because those may be on the way to your main quest or they may not be much out of the way of your main quest. And you can quickly do those, turn those in for very, very quick XP as well as good gear, which obviously good gear speeding you up efficiency wise and then, you know, getting you to a higher level overall. Another thing to talk about is how town projects now work. Obviously, town projects got huge nerfs in the past, and we're going to talk about are they still worth it. So there's specific ones that I believe are worth it in my opinion. Always going to be weapon smithing ones. So here you can see weapon smithing 1730 XP, armor smithing over here 980 XP. We have over here on the side 5110 XP for a weapon smithing reaving steel armaments, and then we also have a 7090 XP for the ransacking star metal armaments. All this could obviously change in XP rates, but these are always going to be relevant for the reason of being that you are gathering, you are refining, and you are crafting. You are going through every single part of the process here. If we go to trade skills specifically, you can see that you are leveling up your gathering by getting the getting the uh, resource. You're going to level up your refining by you know refining the resource. Then you're going to level up the crafting by crafting the resource. So you're getting levels every single way and step of the way here. And then you're just you know and instead of selling the actual you know crafted gear, which never really sells or salvaging it, you're just going to actually get XP for it instead. So it's definitely worth doing these weapon smithing ones as well as cooking. So here we have 10 energizing travel rations. Very, very easy and quick to do. 1300 XP. Obviously, like I said, these XP rates may even change before release yet, but there's a ton of different re ways to you know level up, and this is all for release. Like I said, all of this is going to still be relevant in my opinion because these are still going to be great ways to level up even if they are cut in, you know, a little bit in XP rates. So cooks needed, like I said, 10 energizing travel rations. I don't use mana. I don't even want to sell it on the, uh, you know, on the market. So therefore, I'm just going to come over here, turn it in 1300 XP that quick. Another thing to always do is grab these explore and finds. Explore and finds are very, very good. Basically side quests in a way. Uh, and so if they're on your way to, you know, a main quest story uh, or just really you know, doing another side quest, if they're in your way or in your path, it's just quick, fast XP. And they may even sometimes be a part of your quest. So definitely take advantage of doing all town bro or all town project, uh, I guess, quests is what I'm going to call them. But, you know, the ones I would stay away from are going to be the gathering and refining quests, just because, like I said, there's not going to be much that you get out of that other than just the XP. And you're going to lose the, the uh, you know, if you don't care, I guess, about the refining and the gathering or sorry, not the gathering, but the refining and the crafting part of things, then I guess you can still do, like I said, those acquire and deliver on green wood and iron ingots and steel ingots and aged wood or whatever else. But for the most part, I always try to stay away from the gathering and refining ones and always go to the crafting so I can level up all the way. Because like I said, guys, when you are crafting, you do get XP for the crafting, you get XP for the refining. So that's all XP as well that you're missing out on. I do want to jump over to the forge though and look into these specifically for those of you who don't know much about this. So if we go over to the forge, you're going to see all of these recipes from quests here at the top left, and you're going to see what kind of weapon smithing you're going to get. So here at the first one, you may not get much because it's very, very easy. 20 iron ore, 10 hide, and 25 are not hard at all. So you get 612 armoring. But if you go to the very, very bottom one, 
This one you're going to get 4,030 weapon smithing, 5 star metal ingots, 15 wide word uh, planks, and then 5 layered leather as well. So 4,030 weapon smithing is a ton, and you're going to get a ton of level character level XP as well when doing these. So definitely take advantage of that. And I also want to talk a little bit about faction missions. So they're kind of basically side quests in a way. You know, they always kind of repeat at least faction PvP missions at this point in time. Do repeat constantly until you get, uh, you know, high enough, and then you'll start getting elite PvP um, or sorry, PVE, you'll start getting elite. Um, so here you can actually see here, there's an elite quest right there, but maybe a little bit hard for just you as a solo player, depending on your level and depending on your skill. But for the most part, you're going to want to accept all these PVE missions as well as all of these PVP missions to continue on that leveling speed. And you can see right here on the top left, flagging for XP actually does give you 5% XP bonus while flag. So Flagging up is going to be another great way to get very, very quick XP. And we've talked about that in the past. You know, it depends on your skill level. It depends on if you like PvP, but definitely take advantage of it if you do, because if you get kills, you're also going to see here, if we go to Weapon Mastery, you're going to level up very, very, very quickly, Weapon Mastery-wise, and you're going to have a chance for great loot drops on the uh, on these kills that you get in the PvP open world as well. So it's a lot of fun, and you get rewarded in a great way. So I think they could up it a little bit, but 5% XP is still going to be worthwhile to take advantage of that if you guys like the experience of PvP, definitely going to be something you want to do. I am just trying to walk you guys through all of the different leveling techniques and ways. Obviously, like I said, side quest is going to be one of the biggest. And then if you guys don't know, there is territory standing on the side here. So let's say we are a newcomer in Everfall. We can select territory standings. And there is going to be things like gathering speed, crafting fees, and territory standings. So if you want gathering speed because maybe you're doing a ton of town projects, maybe that's something to think about, getting gathering speed early on. But the biggest thing is if you go to a new world, or sorry, not a new world, but a new territory, you're actually going to have these options for XP gain. If you want to level up the fastest, get these XP gains. You're only going to miss out on a couple different things. We've talked about that. If you guys didn't know, if you want to do like a quick overview on the territory standing, I do have an entire guide on the territory standing and what I would take personally and what uh, you should be taking when it comes to territory standing, depending on what you guys prefer to do. But XP gain is definitely an option when you guys are getting levels in your territory. So definitely keep that in mind as XP gain is, like I said, definitely an option. I do want to say, guys, as well, there's a ton of opportunities to level up side quests, main quests, PvP, PvE faction missions. There's killing players and being flagged up, giving you that 5% increase, territory standing, giving you the increase, and then gathering, refining, and crafting, all giving you character XP as well. So take advantage of all of the different methods. Find out which one you guys like the most and just get used to you know grinding in a way that makes you happy. I think that's going to be one thing that's very, very important. You can also take advantage of corrupted portals. That's something I haven't really talked too much about, but if you guys do know there are corrupted portals around the map, these give you character XP. Not much, if at all, any on the weapon mastery. So if you guys are looking to get weapon mastery up and you're very worried about your weapon mastery, stick to PvP on these, you know, on the way to these quests instead of corrupted portals. But like I said, if you're looking to just get character XP, they are good character XP and they give you some pretty good loot at those corrupted portals. I do want to jump into one more thing. As we jump into the map here, you can actually see that there's a ton of different zones. There's going to be a ton of different side quests in the white zones as well. These give you a ton of XP, and actually some of these are the easiest faction missions you'll find on the map, so definitely take advantage of these as well. And like I said, guys, there's tons of ways to level up, tons of different things you can do. And if you go to the four as well, this is where you'll find a lot of PvP. If you're looking to find PvP for maybe Weapon Mastery instead of Character XP, I know this is about Character XP mostly this video, but Forts are going to be one way to find a ton of XP. If you just go and try to claim a fort, you can see that, uh, like, if I wanted to go to, um, so since I'm actually, I think, I, what am I? I'm purple right now. So if I am purple and I go to Weaver's Fen and I go to this fort right here and take it over, it'll actually start showing up on the map that it's being attacked. And they'll most likely have tons of people reacting to it, and you'll get a lot of PvP if you want to level up that weapon mastery very, very quickly. But you can also see there are territory bonuses for control. So you can actually see here, 5% is the experience bonus if you do control the fort. So if you really, really want to, you can go try to control the fort before grinding in that, uh, you know, in that zone specifically or territory. Most likely not going to be worth it in the release because there's going to be so many players jumping on that fort, and it's going to switch back and forth so much, and you as one 
person probably won't have enough influence to take over the fort by yourself. But that's just another kind of XP bonus that you may want to keep in mind when it comes to New World. And so thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you guys haven't already, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on. We're going to keep you guys up to date with so much regarding New World, whether it's the fastest leveling or PvP builds or, you know, really so much more. So there is going to be PvP tier lists, PvE, P, uh, probably PvE tier lists as well. So much coming, like I said. So make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys all in the next one.